I've often said that audio is the one thing that you can play a game without. You don't notice audio until it's not there. You can watch a movie or play a game without the sound. You would only have like half the experience, I would say. The challenge for us is to make it worth listening to our sounds, listening to our work. We've really got to earn the attention. We try to make games sound natural and the less you hear it, the better it is for us because it means you are into this world and it's believable. I think that was one of the main aspects. So when it comes to making a ship, the art makes it look really good. The props make it look believable from the inside. But when it comes to audio, when the audio is done, this is really what it's bring to life. Ship ambience is like pretty much everything that happens when you walk inside your ship, sounds you can hear that makes it a space, basically. If you were to consider ambience in painting, the ambience for us would be represented as the first layer of paint, the background on which we apply much more detailed and curated strokes of flair and interest. We call that the bed because that's the thing you, re re you lay on, basically. You rely on that to make it believable. And it's one thing you don't really hear. You don't pay attention to it, but it's there and it makes it believable as a space you're in. And it can really sell the immersion of a ship. Presently, this is all done by hand and it takes a lot of time. So myself and Corentin have banded together to make overarching systems which will take less input and make all the ship systems unified and in turn these ambiences will become already generated on the ship at runtime because we know how a Drake ship's supposed to sound, we know how a MISC ship's supposed to sound, we can implement that before the ship even exists in order to save us time and then allow us to spend more time on the really characterful elements, the thrusters, the moving parts, anything that really brings that higher level of quality to the ship at the end. So with physicalized components, we thought it would really be a good idea to have them be the center of attention for the rework of ship ambiences, meaning you can have all sorts of different components in your ship, a shield generator, power plant, all that stuff. These would have sounds attached to them, being reactive and all that stuff, um, depending on what you do in your ship. And that would then fill all the space inside your ship we envision the excitement of a player switching on the quantum drive and f hearing the quantum fuel traveling through the pipes from the fuel tank and bind into the quantum drive before you engage quantum travel and hearing that surge back with a backfire towards the quantum fuel tank and then you feel the inertia of the ship traveling forward at a great speed, which really make the player feel like they're on a moving ship going through space. This would modulate depending on the amount of energy you use uh, during your flight sessions. So if you would, if you were to walk around your ship, uh, if the pilot is going really fast and using a lot of different systems, the sound would react to that and create a more busy ambience. If you would walk to the actual component itself, you would hear it uh, in action live. Moving from the inside out, we move to thrusters. Thrusters really convey the propulsion of the ship going forward. As a pilot or passenger, you should be able to know or feel what the ship is doing and how it's traveling through space, regardless of where you are on the ship. We need to tell players that 
and maybe sorting cargo in the cargo bay. Which direction the player's traveling? Are you rolling? Are you evading enemies? We wanted to rework that to make it more up-to-date with the new systems, especially master modes. The idea was that in um, combat mode, your ship must be more reactive, much more aggressive, with a limited uh, speed range. So that's what we were trying to express with uh, Indo thrusters. Wherein we have multiple modes of flight, which really affect how the thrusters work sonically. You would hear less uh, filtering, like more high frequencies. It would be, you would feel the weight of your ship when going really fast. You want to hear that you are in combat, and this is the thing that maintains you uh, living, basically. So yeah, you want to, you want to take care of that ship. Finally today, impact, things colliding with the hull of the ship. The plan for impact is to move to a more localised, descriptive version of what we have currently. When you are in combat, uh, when you get hit, you want to know how you got hit and where you got hit. So that's where the rework of impacts come, come into place. You need to know exactly where you got hit and at what extent. If your ship got badly damaged, this needs to be communicated. Impact from ballistics, laser weapons and bullets will tell the player the sound on the exterior of the ship, whereas vibrations will give more information about the stress that that impact is having on the ship. All these things are affecting the hull of the ship and we need to sort of let the player on board know whether they're a pilot or not, what sort of environment they're flying through. Crashing is a, is a big thing that audio doesn't support well at the moment. But we are trying to make that right, especially crashing into grounds lending, all, the, all these uh, interactions with bigger objects. We want to reflect that and we want to make sure that your passengers will know if you make slight uh, flight mistakes, let's say. You'll be aware that your pilot's doing a good or bad job, depending on the debris or the impacts that are happening on the hull, and you can let them know that they're not doing particularly well. So that was a glimpse of the many things we're working on for Ship Experience, and we really are trying to bring this experience to the next level. So altogether, what we call the Ship Experience is greatly improved by these overarching systems which play back and forth within each other, allowing the player to really feel that they're in a li living, breathing ship, and that their ship is unique amongst other ships. You might have another loadout with the components, to someone else with the identical ship, and this will make your Sonic experience unique in which other games really can't portray. We hope you'll enjoy all the new stuff we bring in the future. So what did we learn this week? Well, hopefully between the Claudia show and this, we've showcased just a little bit about why audio is so important to creating a truly immersive experience for our players. Why it can be an important means for pilots, passengers, engineers, and attackers alike to gauge a situation and respond appropriately, and that the audio experience continues to be improved and iterated upon just like any other aspect of Star Citizen. So for Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week. Did I get everything on the list? Yeah, I think so.